what is happening everybody my name is max i am a photographer software engineer and a bunch of other things but those two are the only ones that matter today i want to talk to you about luminar 4 specifically what's wrong with luminar 4 why i don't think you should be getting it if you were thinking about it and why i am not going to be upgrading i am currently using luminar 3 as my primary photo editing tool i switched from lightroom over a year ago and I absolutely loved it. Uh, Luminar is kind of slow, for the reasons I'm going to explain in a bit, but it gave me so much more features than Lightroom did. Uh, for example, it had unlimited effect stack. So instead of having one HSL adjustment and one tone curve, you can stack three HSLs, a lookup table, a curve, another HSL, two steps of denoising, and the effect stack can be essentially unlimited. And if you only need like a, a simple highlights adjustment, you can just add that and keep your effect stack clean, which was great. Uh, it also has things like lookup tables. They also have uh, a bunch of automatic things that they call AI technologies, but we're gonna get into that in a second. So why am I not going to be switching to Luminar 4 and why I don't think you should? Well, first of all, the new UI looks more that of an iPad app than of a professional photo editor. I really don't like it, uh, but that's that's subjective. Uh, the actual issue with the with the Luminar 4 is the fact that by Skylum's own admission, uh, the effect stack is going to be rearranged under the hood for better performance. And I can sort of understand that uh, performance in Luminar is kind of shit. And that's primarily because of the unlimited effects stack, because the app doesn't know uh, what's going to be happening in terms of effects order. So it needs to re-render the entire stack every time you make an adjustment. That's the price you pay for more features, essentially. But Luminar 4 is going to be doing that under the hood, which is essentially black magic, and it makes your effects stack no longer guaranteed. And that means that all of the presets from Luminar 3, all of the presets that they sell, are essentially going to become invalid at some point. And Skylum admitted as much under one of their YouTube videos. Uh, they said that the filters have been deprecated, they're, you're going to have to uh, readjust your presets, which, if you are relying on a predictable unlimited stack, is no longer possible because if it decides to apply one filter before the other it's just not going to give you the same look and overall skylum seems to be moving luminar in the direction of a simple one-click tool they have actually admitted as much themselves they had a blog post i think it was an interview with their cto or something like that where they said that they have done the research and they figured out that the customers want simpler tools, which th that research does not exist. It's not true. Uh, because people switching from Lightroom uh, to tools like Luminar or Capture One, they want an advanced editing tool. People who want a one-click editor are going to download an iPhone app. They're going to download Facetune, uh, and they're going to just do that uh, on their phone with one click. That's not what these professional tools are supposed to be. But I think there is an underlying reason why Skylum is moving towards simplifying Luminar. Luminar 4 has been announced in the end of June, which is a few weeks after Apple's WWDC. Now, if you don't know what WWDC is, it's basically Apple's conference where they announce their new operating systems, primarily. Sometimes they announce hardware, but that doesn't matter. Just forget about it for now. It's not important. What's important is that macOS Catalina was announced a few weeks before Luminar 4 was announced. Now, why is this important? It is important because Catalina brings a ton of updates to Core Image. Core Image is essentially Apple's engine for image processing. Uh, all of the stuff that you can do in an iPhone app that edits photos uh, essentially uses Core Image. Uh, what Apple has done is they have implemented all of the core photo editing features that tools like Lightroom have, like your shadows, your highlights, your tone curve, your saturation adjustment, cropping, all of that stuff has been implemented by Apple and baked into their operating system. So iOS and macOS have this built in 
And if you want to make a photo editor for iOS, you essentially don't have to write any image processing code. What you need to do is just come up with a pretty interface and you have got yourself a photo editor. Hmm, have you noticed that this looks like an iPad app? But then you might be thinking, wait, does, it, does Core Image really have all of the AI stuff and all of the other custom features that Luminar has? And uh, no, no, it does not. However, I recently came across this interesting GitHub project, which essentially implements a lot of interesting filters for Core Image. For example, Surface Blur, which is the most common effect used to do skin smoothing. Hmm. Or if we scroll up, there's lookup tables, which is one of my favorite Luminar features. But if we scroll down, there's an interesting thing called Contrast Limited Adaptive Histogram Equalization. Uh, you can look up what that means. I'm not going to explain the science behind it because it's going to take forever. But what you want to pay attention to is how these two images look. And now if we open Skylum's Accent AI promotion page, hmm. And then the same developer actually has an updated version of the histogram equalization filter, which you could call Accent AI 2.0. Hmm. And now you're thinking, wait, are you saying Skylum just repackages open source work and some of the built-in features into their own app and sells it at full price? What about AI features? Well, first of all, if you see AI in marketing of any software or any platform or anything at all, it's garbage. AI does not exist. Had somebody invented AI, you would have known about it because you're gonna have robot overlords the next day. What we actually have is called machine learning, and I have to give it to Apple because they are always honest about it. Apple has not once said AI in any of their promos or marketing or conferences. When it comes to AI features, for example, like face aware enhancements, face light, uh, what you can use for that is Core ML, which is kind of like Core Image, but for machine learning. Again, Apple has done all of the heavy lifting that you need to do. You just need to feed it a bunch of data, tell it what to look for, and you can essentially make a one-click face finder. So you can use this to look up a face and then generate a black and white mask and then use that as a mask for a surface blur layer, which is what Core Image would do for you. So whenever Skylum claims that they have created a revolutionary AI algorithm First of all, AIs and algorithms are supposed to be completely opposite things. And also Core ML exists and Core Image exists and you now know about those. So I think Skylum is being really disingenuous with, with Luminar 4 and with the direction they're headed and with the motivations behind it. Had they been honest about it, had they said, hey, we want to make a simpler tool because it's simpler for us and we want to get those, those Instagram models to use our tools instead of professional photographers. I would have been fine with that because at least you're being honest. But if you're making a core image limited iPad level app instead of a highly advanced tool that Luminar 3 was, I can't really get behind that. So I'm not going to be upgrading and I don't recommend you switching to Luminar 4. Uh, if you're looking for a Lightroom alternative, if you just hate Lightroom, get Luminar 3 if you still can. I think you still can. Yeah, you can still get it. Uh, get Luminar 3. It's really good. Luminar 4 is kind of shit, and based on what Skylum has said themselves, Luminar 5 is definitely going to be shit. So yeah, that's what I think about Luminar 4. That's why I think you shouldn't uh, shouldn't invest in it. And uh, that's it for this video.